Today's DIYs are all about fabric and how you can use it to make fall decor. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Liz. For today's video, I am gonna show you how you can take fabric and turn it into really cute fall home decor. If you see those little pumpkins in the background, I'm gonna teach you how to make those. So go grab all the fabric scraps that you have, run to the store, pick up some fall fabric patterns, and let's jump into our first DIY. For this DIY, I picked up three different types of fabric. These all came from Joann and they were a little bit more on the pricey side because of the type of material they are. They aren't just like a solid cotton print. They are stretchy and I loved the knit look to them. So I want to say that they were probably around $5 for half of a yard. Still not terrible. If you're going to make pumpkins out of all this fabric, you could probably make three of them about this size out of all the fabric that I purchased, which makes them very affordable. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I just cut out a circle and I used a 14 inch round to kind of give me a rough estimate and I'm also going to take a needle and thread and tie a little knot at the bottom of the thread and I'm just going to go down and up with my needle over and over and over around the entire circle so that when you pull the needle you pull the string it cinches up closed so you'll just go up and down and up and down i know this has a stitch name <laughs> i'm just not a sewer so i don't know the exact term for this stitch but like i said you're just going to go down and up and down and up just over and over till you get all the way around so your goal is to cinch everything closed when you pull that string nice and tight so after you've done that you're going to take your filler i just used a bag of polyfill and i just took some of that and filled inside of my little pumpkin or you know it it kind of looks like a little bag, so you're just going to fill it with as much polyfill as you want, however big and fluffy you want your pumpkin to be. Once you have your filler in there, you're just going to go ahead and pull that string nice and tight till you can cinch the top closed. And to keep it that way, I just went back in with my needle and just added some extra stitches throughout the entire thing over the little cinch circle so that everything stayed nice and tight. I did some knots throughout it as well. So you are just going to sew the top closed. There really is no uh, skill needed for this. Like I said, I'm not a huge sewer. I can do some basic sews, some basic things with my sewing machine, but I'm absolutely not professional by any means so if I can do this trust me you can do this as well so just add those stitches until the top of your pumpkin is all nice and closed now you are going to take a bigger needle with some bigger string this is just a thicker string that I had and you're just going to thread your string in and you're also going to want to tie a knot at the bottom you're going to find the middle of the bottom of your pumpkin and you're going to thread that string through the bottom to the top, and then you are going to repeat these steps. You're gonna to wanna to make sure after you've done each loop that you're pulling that string nice and tight. This is going to make the you know little ridges of the pumpkin. So make sure that you're pulling that nice and tight because you will not be able to go back through and pull it tight later. So make sure you're doing that the first time <laughs> that you pull your string. So I decided to do mine in eight pieces, I believe. I just started out with four and then I cut those fourths in half. So I did this a total of eight times. So you're just gonna keep going back through, poke your needle through the bottom, through to the top, pull your string nice and tight so it makes the ridges of that pumpkin and you're just going to continue to do this depending on how many ridges that you want in your pumpkin two of them I did the eight and then one of them I just did five so you're just going to continue this until you are all done making the ridges of your pumpkin once you have that done you are going to tie off the string at the very top I just went around some of the string that was already there and tied some knots 
just making sure that everything was going to be secured in place. Now this is what my pumpkin looked like when I was done adding all those ridges. So you can see the basics of what it should look like. Now I used this green fabric that was more stretchy and it wasn't woven as tightly. So when I did my thread around the top, every time I would pull it, the knot would start coming through the fabric so it didn't hold. So for this one, I'm gonna put my polyfill in the middle of my fabric and then I'm just gonna start gathering that fabric into my hands, just bundling it all up. And I took a plastic elastic that I had and this was just something that I used to do my girl's hair with. So I just took that elastic and tied it around the top of my pumpkin. So for any kind of fabrics that are not as tightly woven and your thread is just going to pull through, I would suggest doing this. There are so many different ways that you can make fabric pumpkins and there's a ton of tutorials out there. So if this is not something that you think you can do, definitely check out other fabric pumpkin DIYs because there are so many of them out there. So, so for this one, to make sure that the top was going to be extra secure, I took my thread and I threaded it through the bunch of fabric at the top. I wound the top up with my thread and added another little stitch through the top of the fabric, added a knot and just tried to secure it that way. And then again, you're going to grab your bigger needle and your thicker yarn and you're going to start making the ridges of your pumpkin. So like I said, this one is only going to have five ridges. So since you can't really go through the middle of this one, I just tried to get as close to the middle as I possibly could without having to go through all that yarn bunched up in the middle and I would just go through and stick my needle to the next spot at the top where I wanted the next ridge to be so just make sure that you're pulling nice and tight and then you're going back through the bottom and doing these steps all over again it's really as simple as that these were a lot easier to make than i thought that they were going to be and i tried my best to find ones that was like a no sew but i personally found that the sewing option when you're cinching it around the top works better than trying to secure it in place with an elastic that's just my personal preference and then you don't have that big bunched up piece in the middle, but I still think this one turned out really cute. So I just wanted to show you both ways that I did it so that you could decide which way you wanted to do it for your pumpkins. So I grabbed all three of my pumpkins and I am going to start embellishing them. So I found these cute little leather tags at Hobby Lobby. They came in a pack of three, I believe, and they were about 250. And I just untied the knot on one of them, added some wooden beads, and I'm going to take these little wooden branches that came in a pack from the Dollar Tree. I just hot glue those to the middle of my pumpkins. I'm going to add one of the little leather tags to my cream pumpkin. I also take some wired jute, wrap that around a marker to make those little coils, and I added that around the stem of my pumpkin. And then I added some of this mesh ribbon that I had from the Dollar Tree, wrapped it around that stem a couple times and tied a couple knots. I didn't want to go too crazy with embellishments on these pumpkins because I kind of wanted them to be simple and not, you know, too over the top. So I didn't add too much to any of them, just kind of, you know, gave them a nice little touch. For my orange pumpkin, I added some of this cream mesh ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree. I added some more coiled wired twine to my green one, added some more of this burnt orange mesh ribbon from Dollar Tree onto that green pumpkin, and I just tied that into several knots. To finish off my more orange pumpkin, I took some of these orange berries. I guess it's kind of yellow, more yellow pumpkin. I don't know, orange, yellow, whatever, whatever color it is. I added some orange berries onto the pumpkin, added a sunflower to the middle, that finished off that one, and that is it for these pumpkins. I think these turned out so cute. Even my husband came in and said, wow, these look like pumpkins you could buy at a store. So that was a huge compliment, but I think these turned out so beautiful and I can't wait to use them to decorate my house for fall.
popping in here really quickly to let you know that I have a monthly subscription box. I make and sell wooden craft kits every single month. You can get a new wood craft kit with some scrapbook paper to go along with it for a little sneak peek on this month's box. A really cute turkey with a truck that I'm so excited for for Thanksgiving. So if you want to sign up and get my monthly subscription box, I will leave that link down below. For this DIY, I'm going to take a couple embroidery hoops. You are going to take a smaller one and a bigger one. I have the six inch one and I think the bigger one is maybe like a 10 inch. And then I also have some fabric that I believe I picked both of these up from Hobby Lobby. I went to Hobby Lobby and Joann's, picked out a bunch of different fabric that I liked, but you can just get yours wherever. And I'm going to just put my fabric in the smaller pumpkin right away. I just cut that out and then trimmed off the excess fabric that was on the back. Just try to get it as flush to the back as I possibly could. And then for my larger embroidery hoop, I cut out a piece of fabric. I'm going to take a old Cricut mat that I have and I'm going to lay my fabric down. I'm going to use a chalk couture transfer on this, but I am going to do the ink and you want a sticky mat for your back. Chalk Couture does sell one. I just did not have one at the time, so I just used an old Cricut mat, which worked just as well. I'm going to add my transfer to the front. Now, this is the very first time that I ever did a Chalk Couture transfer using the ink, which is a permanent ink that goes on fabric, so you can do it on t-shirts and pillows and those sorts of things. So this is the first time that I tried it, and I think it turned out really fun. So I'm going to lay my transfer down. I'm going to add some washi tape around the edges. And this is just going to make sure to not have any ink accidentally get onto the fabric where it's pretty close to the edge of that transfer. So it's just kind of protecting that fabric a little bit. So I just add the washi tape to all four sides. And I'm going to use just a white ink that Chalk Couture has and a squeegee. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this like you normally would any of your other Chalk Couture projects adding your paste on to your transfer and I found that I needed to press a little bit harder with this I don't know if that's normal or maybe you don't want to press harder I don't know that's just my experience this is the first time that I did it and I needed to press a little bit harder to get that paste actually onto the fabric and maybe it was just the fabric itself I'm not sure but I just peeled my transfer off once I was done and I think it turned out really pretty now again this is the first time that I tried this I watched a couple YouTube tutorials on this and it said to use parchment paper I did not have parchment paper I had wax paper and I thought you know it'd be the same thing it was not so make sure that you use parchment paper or a Teflon sheet do not use the wax paper because it kind of melts that wax onto <laughs> your, um, you know, fabric. It makes it look a little bit darker. So do as I say, not as I'm doing. Once I realize that, I switch back over to a Teflon sheet and you are just going to run your iron over it until the top does not feel tacky anymore. And this is going to set your ink into place and make it permanent on your fabric. So I just did that front and back. And then I'm going to add my embroidery hoop to the fabric. I tightened that up and then I just cut off all the excess fabric from the back. Now to make my stems for this DIY, I took some foil and I just shaped some stems out of it. And then I'm going to add some hot glue and I'm going to use some twine to cover up the foil just around and around and around until all of the foil is no longer showing. I added some glue intermittently as I'm adding the twine just to keep everything nice and secure. And then I am going to hot glue that to the top of my embroidery hoop. And then to make it extra secure, I'm going to take some more twine and I'm going to wrap that around the stem and then around the metal on the top of that embroidery hoop. And I'm just going to do that until there's no longer a gap between the stem and the embroidery hoop. And I'll hot glue that twine into place in the back. I added one of these leather leaves that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I just hot glued this to the smaller of the two pumpkins. And then I added some other embellishments like this burnt orange mesh ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I just tied this several times around the stem of that pumpkin. And then I made a bow using this lace ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I just did a super simple shoelace type bow with it and then hot glued that to the base of my stem. 
them. I also had this Hello Fall tag that came from the Target dollar spot. I just hot glued this to the bottom side of my pumpkin. And then for my larger pumpkin, I wrapped the base of the stem in this lace ribbon. And then I had a couple pieces of this eucalyptus that I hot glued together and then I hot glued that down to my pumpkin. I added this little sunflower right on top of that eucalyptus and then to finish it off I added another lace bow and that is it for these two pumpkins. These are so cute and I thought this project was so much fun. I think these are adorable sitting on a shelf. Let me know what you think about them in the comments. For this DIY, I'm gonna take three different kinds of fabrics. I wanted all of these to kind of be plaid and striped. You're also going to take three pieces of wood. These are three two by fours, all cut to the same length. You are going to be making some faux book stacks. Now you could actually do this with real books if you wanted, but I just had the wood on hand and so decided to use that. You are going to cover all three of your pieces of wood in three different colors of fabric or three different patterns if you want. Whatever you want to do will work for this project, but I just started hot gluing my fabric to the wood. I wanted to try to make this as seamless as I possibly could without a whole bunch of overlapping fabric where you could see it. For your middle book, you don't need to cover the top or the bottom, so I am just covering all the sides for this one, and there really is no rhyme or reason to doing this. Just cover your wood with your fabric as best as you can and making it as seamless as you can. For the top and bottom book, you are going to want to make sure that you are adding fabric to the top or the bottom so that when you can see the bottom, you see the fabric and then obviously you want to be able to see the fabric on your top book. So again, I'm just wrapping this piece of wood with that fabric. And then for your top piece, you're just going to want to make sure that the fabric is covering all four sides and the top of your book. And then you're just going to hot glue everything down. You can cut off any excess fabric that doesn't need to be there. And then once all three pieces of my wood are all covered, I'm going to take some hot glue and stack these pieces of wood on top of each other like you would a book stack. Now I'm going to start embellishing my book stack. So I have this cream colored ribbon. I'm going to wrap this around the side of my book stack and hot glue it on top of each other on the back. And then I have this mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to layer that on top of the cream ribbon and then hot glue that in the back. And then I took some twine and I'm going to wrap that on top of the other two pieces of ribbon and tie it together on top. I did tie a bow with this twine as well. You're not really going to see too much of it, so you can skip this step if you want. It's not really necessary, but I just did it for good measure. And then I am going to hot glue one of these tags to the book stack. Again, this came from Hobby Lobby. I took some pieces of eucalyptus. I also cut off some pieces of this wheat type pick that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I just bunched those together, hot glued them at the bottom, and then I'm just going to glue this to the top of my book stack. I hot glued my eucalyptus leaves right on top of that. And then to finish off, I added a couple sunflowers to the top and that is it for this DIY. I think this turned out so cute. I love the plaid for fall and I love that it's all different colors of plaid and I just think this one is absolutely adorable.
For this DIY, this one is super simple and easy. We are going to make a rag garland. And to do that, I'm gonna take the same materials that I used for my first three pumpkins for that first DIY. And I am cutting about an inch, an inch and a half, probably strips of each of these fabrics and you are just going to cut as many as you want your garland long you don't have to do it as long as I did mine I'm going to put this on my sideboard table that is in my entryway and hang it from the top of there so I just made my garland as long as that was I took this rope from the Dollar Tree that's what I'm going to use as my base and I tied knots on each end so that I had a way to hang my garland from my sideboard or from wherever it is that I'm going to be putting this. I might put it on my mantle once that is done being built, but I just tied those knots on the end. And then all you're gonna do is start taking those strips of fabric and tying them around your garland. So I just started with the yellow or orange fabric and then added my green fabric and then my cream. And I just did a pattern like that all the way to the end. That's all you gotta do for this. It is as simple and as easy as that. This is kind of one of those monotonous crafts where you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So it does get a little bit boring. Turn on a TV show or a movie or listen to a good audio book and just continue this over and over and over until you get all the way finished. Once you're done, it turns out so cute. And I think it's adorable hanging from my sideboard in the entryway and I love that it matches my fabric pumpkins. You could spruce this up even more by adding some wooden pumpkins hanging from it or really whatever you wanted. I just left it as is and I think it turned out absolutely adorable. For this DIY, I took this wood round that I picked up from Lowe's. I believe this is about 10 inches and it is pretty thick as well. I think it's about a half inch thick and I want to say I paid about $8 for it. I'm going to paint the middle with my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm just going to paint the very middle. I'm not going to worry about going to the ends because I am going to be covering that up. I'm going to set this on top of some fabric and just kind of trace out how big I need this to be. I'm going to cut that out using my scissors and I'm going to do this two times. So the top and the bottom of this round are going to be fabric. I wanted the ends to be frayed so I just pulled out a whole bunch of strings from the end so that the ends were all nice and kind of rough looking and you know had that frayed look to them. I'm going to use my Mod Podge and I just did a very light amount. I didn't want the Mod Podge to soak through the fabric too much and have dark spots. So I just did a light layer of this, added my fabric on top of it, and I just did that for the top and the bottom. I have this wood welcome cutout and I want to say that I got it from Michaels. It came in a pack of two, I believe, and I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in moss and I just gave that one good coat. Once that's nice and dry, I'm going to add this wood glue super glue that you can get from the Dollar Tree to the back and I glued that right to the middle of my wood round. I'm gonna make a really messy bow. I just took a bunch of different ribbon that I had and layered it all on top of each other in an X. And I just did this with five pieces of ribbon. I took some twine in the middle and tied that in a knot. And for the middle, I decided I wanted it to look chunky. So I just took that jute twine and wrapped it around and around and around till it made a nice chunky middle. And all I'm gonna do is hot glue that to the top of my wood round. And then lastly, I felt like it was still missing a little something. So I just wrapped some twine around the top of that bottom portion of fabric, tied in a double knot in the back and that is it for this DIY. You could hang this on your door, you could add a hanger on the back, you could add it to your shelf. I just think this one is really fun for fall and I'm loving those fall colors on the sign.
And that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!